Your Excellencies, comrades and friends, members of our party, I thank you very much for taking the time to come here this evening. And um, although members of our party are aware of what this function is about, I'd like to explain just to our guests why we hold this dinner. Everybody has a New Year's party. They have them with their right-wing relatives. <laughs> but that's what happened, that's what happened with it in imperialist countries. We like to celebrate the New Year with our friends, to congratulate them for the victories in the past year and to wish them even greater victories in the New Year. country and I don't need to tell you they're not very very friendly towards people who are socialist or progressive they're not towards us and they're not towards the representatives of the socialist countries they have to have them because they need them for their various purposes for trade for various reasons but we basically want to tell our friends from the, who represent the embassies of socialist countries the People's Republic of China, Kamar Shu Win is here and we welcome him very much. Happy New Year to everyone. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea, Kamar Jean Song Nam is here. And his colleague from the embassy, Kamar Jean Song Song Chol is here. <laughs> and of course, it is, I don't need to remind members of our party, they know it, is the 50th anniversary of the Cuban Revolution, which has planted the flag of the October Revolution in Latin America. And is a continuing challenge to American imperialism 90 miles away from the island of Cuba that we are here to stay. There's nothing you can do about it. You've got to use a lot of people. I continue to tell the Americans instead of trying to change Cuba into a little prostitution center that it was before its liberation, we are going to bring spread socialism to you, to the mainland. countries have done so well for the people of the world. The Soviet Union, the DPRK, Cuba, they've given us so much. People's Republic of China, that we are truly grateful to them for what they've done for us. What we do for them is trivial and very little in comparison. And we hold these functions to tell them, comrades, our governments may be hostile to you, but we are friends to you, we are friends towards your regimes, and we are friends towards your people, and together we will bury imperialism. Yeah. The world is changing. The world is in turmoil. It cannot be put into an era which existed before 1970. Even the forces of the mightiest imperialist country, US imperialism, cannot control Iraq, cannot have control of Afghanistan, and they and the Zionists cannot control Palestine. There are fights going on in, 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 in Latin America, in Colombia, and a number of other places. And make no mistake, whatever skeptics and petty bourgeois snivelers will tell you, the movements of national liberation and socialism are on the upgrade, and they are learning, and they are winning, notwithstanding the devastation caused by Christophite revision. That is precisely the reason Socialist countries are being attacked. DPRK is, is being attacked. If you actually see the portrayal of the leadership of DPRK, they're portrayed as mad people. No mad person could life last a single day on the border between North and South, South Korea yeah, yeah. if they didn't. <laughs> the fact that this tiny nation of the DPRK, nation is the wrong word, third of a nation, in the DPRK, because they're fighting for the reunification. 
that it can actually stand up to US imperialism and dare them and say, we are here to stay, there's nothing you can do to us. Instead of asking us to reform our system, you should reform your system, because yes. your system is outdated yes. and well -done. sell by date. Cubans do the same. I saw an editorial in the Financial Times. This is supposed to be the representative of US of British finance capital. It's written by intelligent people. They can hire the best brain to write. And they're already planning what will happen when Fidel Castro dies. <laughs> well, everybody has to die. There's no one who is immortal. Even Bush will die. <laughs> and the sooner the better. <laughs> But the fact of the matter is that whatever they do, Fidel has left a legacy that people in Cuba will follow and will be able to safeguard the gains of the October uh, the, the, so the, the Cuban Revolution. Do people, ordinary people, want to go back to the times of Batista? Do they want Cuba to be turned into a playground for American imperialism? No, they don't. Do the Chinese want to go back to the era where Japanese could come and invade them and kill thousands of people, tens of thousands of people in, in Nanking and various centers? Do they want the Americans and the British and the, and, and the French and the Germans and even small countries like Denmark to come and lord over them? No, they don't. They have seen liberation and they will never go back to the old times. 